Hi, I'm Mark Durbin. And I'm Rick Kepler. You know, the history of Pine Knot Lodge and the evolution of the Big Bear Village have always been linked very closely together. But what has gone unknown until recently is that the development of both the Pine Knot Lodge and the location of Big Bear Village were pretty much predetermined by one man, a Redlands businessman by the name of John H. Fisher. In November of 1911, John Fisher and his wife Olive purchased almost all of the land located on the west side of Knickerbocker Avenue, which includes the area where most of the Big Bear Village is now located. By March of 1913, Fisher had incorporated the Pine Knot Company and built the Pine Knot Lodge Resort. And the new lodge was an impressive full-service destination resort located at the far south end of the property, about a half mile from the lake. It included a main pavilion, a dining room, a large social hall, a general store, dozens of individual cabins, and even a bank. The Pine Knot Post Office opened at the lodge, and there was also a passenger and freight depot built for the Mountain Auto Line, which provided a constant flow of tourists into Big Bear Valley and delivered them directly to the Pine Knot Lodge. The Pine Knot Company also leased a few more acres at the far north end of its property on the shoreline of the lake and built their own marina called the Pine Knot Boat Landing. At this point in our story, we need to explain why Fisher built his Pine Knot Lodge on the far south end of his property, which, as we said earlier, was a full half mile from the lake. If Fisher's primary intention had been to attract tourists to his new resort, he should have built it on the north end of his property near the lake and their Pine Knot Boat Landing. After all, the lake was the reason people were traveling to Big Bear and that's where they wanted to stay. What needs to be realized is that Fisher's primary goal was actually to sell real estate. That's right, his plan was to subdivide the most valuable part of his property between his new lodge and the lake into smaller commercial lots and parcels. So, with a Pine Knot Lodge located on the south end of the property and his Pine Knot boat landing at the other end, Fisher's Pine Knot subdivision in the middle was now poised to become the commercial center of Big Bear Valley. Fisher had appointed Fred C. Skinner as operations manager in Big Bear for both the Pine Knot Company and the Lodge. Skinner began by setting up Big Bear's first Chamber of Commerce. Known to everyone as Dad, Skinner then launched an aggressive marketing campaign to promote both Big Bear Lake and the Pine Knot Lodge. And he very quickly became a media celebrity when he began appearing continuously in newspapers throughout Southern California. And the media blitz worked. Commercial lots began selling quickly along what would become today's Village Drive. Over on the west end of the subdivision, on the north side of today's Village Drive, B.G. Holmes established the Indian Lodge in 1916. By the 1940s, the same view looked like this. And this is what the area looks like in 2017. At the east end of today's Village Drive, Fred Skinner built his own business with his partner Ed Mitchell in 1918, called the Bear Valley Pavilion. This is what the Bear Valley Pavilion property looked like in 2018. Across the street from the pavilion, on the northwest corner, was the Bartlett's Camp General Store. This was established around 1915 by XG and GM Bartlett. And this is what the corner looks like today. Over on the northeast corner of the same intersection, the Navajo Hotel appeared in 1920. The Navajo Hotel still exists as a Navajo Mall in 2018. By 1920, Frank Johnson had built the Grizzly Theater on the south side of Village Drive between the Indian Lodge and the Bear Valley Pavilion. And this is how the old Grizzly Theater property looked in 2017. By the early 1920s, the village was beginning to emerge and it had adopted the name of Fisher's subdivision, Pine Knot. These 1920 views of the town of Pine Knot looks east along today's Village Drive, which was then known as Big Bear Boulevard. But there were also problems. 
Disaster was narrowly avoided at the Pine Knot Lodge in 1917 when a fire broke out in the main dining room and offices. The fire threatened the whole resort and could have started a forest fire. Since it would be another 10 years before Big Bear Lake would have a fire department, there was very little anyone could do. Fortunately, the winds were calm that day and the fire was contained to just the structures involved. One of the biggest challenges that Fisher and Skinner faced was that Big Bear was strictly a summertime resort. During the long winter months, lodges and businesses simply shut down. However, a solution to this problem would come from an unlikely source, Hollywood. It needs to be pointed out that in the early 1900s, the newly developing Hollywood film industry had discovered Big Bear. Every summer, gunfights, cattle stampedes, and Indian raids were being filmed all over the valley. Even the Pine Knot Lodge was used as a film set in many films. John Fisher had strong Hollywood connections. He had met famed Hollywood producer Cecil B. DeMille in 1914 when he was in Big Bear filming Call of the North. Fisher and DeMille immediately developed a friendship and a business relationship that would last for many years. Fisher never missed an opportunity to appear as an extra whenever DeMille was filming in Big Bear. Here we see John Fisher dressed as an Indian during the production of Call of the North. Because of Fisher's Hollywood connections, Fred Skinner announced that Pine Knot Lodge would stay open during the winter months to accommodate any film company who wanted to film year-round in Big Bear. And the film industry responded enthusiastically. But it was not without problems. Traveling to Big Bear during the winter was both hazardous and extremely uncomfortable. It usually required an all-day trip in open vehicles. The members of this film company has just arrived at the Pine Knot Lodge after a long trip up the hill in the dead of winter, and they don't look happy. It was not uncommon for snowstorms to shut down mountain roads for weeks at a time. This newspaper article reports how plans are being made to rescue a film company that has been snowed in for weeks with food supplies running low. In spite of it all, thanks to the film industry, more Big Bear resorts and businesses began staying open year-round. In the summer of 1921, with the area along Pine Knot's Village Drive growing rapidly, Phase 2 of the Pine Knot subdivision between Village Drive and the lake along Pine Knot Avenue had been filed and was open for business. Once sales got started in that part of the subdivision, that area also began developing rapidly. Elmer Deem's garage was built in 1926, and when Big Bear's first volunteer fire department was formed in 1927, this is where it was based. In the 1940s, this view down Pine Knot Avenue looked like this. And here is a similar view from 2017. By the early 1930s, the Pine Knot Lodge had been in existence barely 20 years. But the majority of Fisher's Pine Knot subdivision had successfully sold, and the village was growing rapidly. To illustrate just how much, check out these two views. In this 1919 view, we look west down upon the Pine Knot Lodge. The village between the lodge and the lake hasn't really developed yet. By the early 1940s, the same area looked like this. And it shows the Pine Knot Village between the lodge and the lake fully developed in the Pine Knot subdivision. This is a pre-1920 view down Pine Knot Avenue from the front porch of the Pine Knot Lodge. And this is what the same view looked like in 2018. By the early 1930s, the Pine Knot Lodge had served its purpose, and the village community had taken on a life of its own, and decided to officially change the name of the village from Pine Knot to the name we have today, Big Bear Lake. John Fisher, Fred Skinner, and the Pine Knot Lodge have long since vanished into history. 
but the legacy that they left behind continues on. And that's our look at John Fisher's Pine Knot Village. See you next time.